Okay, ladies and gentlemen, welcome into the last video of the year for our community, for our channel. I appreciate everybody that rocked with us this year. We had a lot of crazy music. This is easily one of the best music years that I've been alive. And on top of that, one of the best music years, if not the best, since 2016. And that's got me crazy excited for this video because we are coming to our top 10 albums of the year. Guys, we curated this list and the songs of the year list on Twitch, and we do tournaments, we do music reactions reactions and reviews, YouTube reactions, reviews, comedy, video games. We do everything over on Twitch. It's a variety. If y'all like me as a content creator and y'all go and want to get more in depth with the community, the Twitch stream is most definitely the best place to do it. It is a crazy intimate. Also, if you want to support this channel, I do this full time on YouTube because of people who are willing to join on Patreon. The Patreon's range in value, but you can pretty much get 80% of the content by signing up for the $5 tier. That's really all that I need. I just need y'all support so that way I can keep rocking this thing the way that we have been doing the last two years. But without further ado, let's get right into it. My top 10 albums of this year. And right out the gate at number 10, we are going to have one that everybody is going to be surprised by because I had no mention of this person at any point during the year. At the number 10 spot, we have Nessa Barrett with Young Forever. I found this album on iTunes on the Friday that it was released. This is the debut album for this artist. And let me tell you, this is probably my favorite pop album of the year. I was not expecting what I heard whenever I downloaded this album. Some of my favorite songs that I replayed the most at the end of this year were off of this album. Let me go through this list of tracks right here. We have Tired of California, crazy opening track. Gaslight, crazy follow-up and lyrics to that track. Gaslight, I'm not crazy if I'm right. Fire, bro. Forgive the world, solid track. I'll forgive the world as long as the world has you. Too hot to cry. If more people knew about her, that would be a caption on IG for all of these, all of these bitches going through breakups. Unnecessary violence, decay, die first. She is basically, if I had to put it in any way, she is basically a rated R version of Olivia Rodrigo. She is the curb your enthusiasm to Olivia Rodrigo's Seinfeld. Seinfeld is the more popular show. But Curb Your Enthusiasm is most definitely the harder hitter of the two. It is rated R, emo pop in every sense of the word. If y'all guys like pop music, I promise you the hooks, the melodies, everything here, the songwriting is infectious and it's just a solid album. At the number nine spot, my goat, my greatest lyricist of all time, we have Lupe Fiasco with Drill Music in Zion. This entire album was written in three days, bro three days it would take me three months just to write miss mural song alone it would take me for forever to even come up with the song precious things this album basically has every facet of lupe that you could want it has conscious rap lupe with phone them it has picture painting storytelling lupe with miss mural it has conceptually driven tracks with precious things and kiosk it has hard hitting lupe with banger beats with autobato this album this album is amazing it's arguably his best since tetso and youth Wave Files was amazing, but it was a little bloated in length. This is 10 tracks, 40 minutes, in and out, all written in a span of three days. Lupe is the lyrical goat, and this album is just more evidence of that. At the number eight spot on our top 10 list, we have The Weeknd with Don FM. This album is going to be an underrated album in The Weeknd's discography when it's all said and done. When it comes to The Weeknd's music, you basically have to look at the entire concept of the project, of the trilogies, where we're at in time in The Weeknd's career in order to understand why this should be in the album of the year list. It's got bangers first off. There's not a single miss on this album. If there is a miss on this album, it's probably gonna be the one with Tyler, the creator, but even that to me isn't necessarily a miss. But the reason why people are going to rate this lower is because they're rating it as the album as it sits, but they're not factoring in where in the storyline we are at in this album. This is not going to have the grand crazy production that After Hours had because we are literally supposed to be in purgatory with this album awaiting our soul's future. So it is much more subdued. It is much more melancholic. It's sad. It's it's regretful. And The Weeknd pulls off this 80s synth vibe and, and just transforms that synth pop into a whole different style from after hours and dawn fm people are going to rate this album lower because after hours exist before it but this is exactly what it needs to be for the storyline where after hours is exactly what it needs to be for its section of the storyline i know i got some exo people mad telling me that i'm not exo because i had no weekend tracks in the top 10 that's because the standouts of the weekend tracks are not stronger than the standouts 
of the top 10 list, but as a whole, the album is stronger, especially fitting it in in the story of After Hours. At the number seven spot on this list, we have another album where people are gonna be like, didn't even realize he fucked with that album like that, but we have Kenny Beats instrumental album, Louie. For those that don't know, Kenny Beats is one of the most gifted, one of the most prolific producers, not only in hip hop, but in all music at his age and his generation. And this beat tape is phenomenal. With all of the emotion that I felt and the emotion that is on display in this album with zero words being said, there is no way that this was not gonna make the top 10. This album is gonna go down as one of the classic producer instrumental only albums just like donuts by jay dilla this album and this type of album is a very much if you know you know a lot of people are not going to get it because they're like i need lyrics i just don't get the vibe of the album but if you get it you get it kenny beats talent for production is on full display here more so than it has ever been every single note of every single track here was solely kenny beats and if you are someone who wants to potentially catch a vibe to a project there really is no better vibe than louis next up at number six another surprising one that people are going to be like whoa didn't even know that, that was going to be on the list we got Swedish House Mafia with Paradise again. You don't even realize how crazy anticipated this album was in the house, in the EDM, in the electronic scene. Swedish House Mafia, one of the biggest names in EDM, and they had never dropped a project in the last 10 years that people have been waiting. This is their debut project, and it doesn't let down at any moment of the project. If you are someone who's into EDM electronic music, this is in the subgenre of Progressive House, and they are by far the leaders of Progressive House and always have been, and this album just solidifies it even more. This album's variation is so wide, but at the same time, all sounding cohesive and as an album. It's a phenomenal album, bro. I really don't know what to say other than that. It's Again, if you like EDM, you get it. If you, if you like electronic music, you probably have this album downloaded if you don't if you want to listen to it give it a shot that bro this is another if you know you know type situation to be that anticipated for your debut album that people have been waiting for 10 years and then you fully deliver ain't no way this album's not on the top 10. here we are into the top five ladies and gentlemen and starting it off at number five we have quadeca didn't mean to haunt you i had zero tracks from quadeca's album not in not only in my top 10 in my like 30 other tracks in my honorable mention video zero quad deca so to have zero quad deca but then be putting him at number five on the album of the year list what's up with that it's because this album from front to back this album almost has to be listened to in full form from front to back no song is going to stand out on its own but every song is a standout when placed against each other. This is the definition of listening to an album in full. I didn't, when I when I put this on the channel, when I put Quadeca's album on the channel, I couldn't even cut it up. Most times when you see a reaction on the channel for an album, I cut it up for time's sake. I could not cut this up. I tried to, and I was like, it just doesn't hit unless you hear the entire song for every single song. This is a textbook definition of an S tier concept album. And then to consider that Quadeca came from YouTube rap, from making gimmicky videos, oh, let me do a hundred impersonations of these type of rappers. To come from that, to not even put putting out rap anymore, now you're putting out something like this? That growth and that evolution of, an, of artistry is crazy. The emotional journey that this album takes you on is insane well deserved to be in the top five at the number four spot ladies and gentlemen we have freddie gibbs sold sold separately easily one of the most consistent rappers his voice his delivery his flow his rhyme schemes the dark matters and subjects in which he talks about his age bringing street wisdom and just everything that comes with age he had my number two song with dark hearted of the year and that is not the only banger on that album insane showing by freddie i always use the analogy that it's hard to follow up a grand slam home run with like doesn't matter what the next batter does they're everybody's still gonna be talking about the grand slam that is how hard it is to follow up an album at the level of alfredo but if alfredo is a home run this album is a triple. It's like, oh shit, we got a home run. It's like, we were all hyped about the home run, dapping up everybody, and then we look and boom, this motherfucker hits a triple right after. Oh shit. That is Alfredo and Soul Sold separately, back to back. Solid albums, bro. Freddie is goaded, iconic at this point. And here we have, ladies and gentlemen, the top three albums of 2022, in my personal opinion. 
And at the bronze medal spot, we got Kendrick Lamar, Mr. Morale, and the Big Steppers. Y'all know that this had to be up here. There was no way that it wasn't. A lot of people are going to have this at their number one, and deservedly so. It actually took me a while to, to come around to this album. When I heard it for the first time, I was like, it's solid. It's Kendrick. You know, I wasn't, I wasn't going to go back and re-listen too much. I forced myself to re-listen three, four, or five times, and every, and every time that I listened to it, I was like, oh, I'm getting it more and more. This album is the most vulnerable that you could potentially be on an album while also shouting out vulnerability that you see in your community. Calling light to and facing the mirror to your community and being like, bro, we got issues. It is not cool to be hiding behind those issues with, with, with bravado and with I'm the toughest dude alive. I don't give a fuck about jail. I don't give a fuck about life. Like all of that is normally what you would expect from rap. And someone as prolific as Kendrick Lamar coming in and giving us his extremely, extremely personal moments in his life and putting that out on full display. And from that display, hoping that people realize that therapy is okay, that having problems is okay, that it's okay to cry. You can't be hiding in that shell of whatever you put on to hide the scars. Kendrick showing his scars, Kendrick showing his personal battles, showing his skeletons in the closet and doing it at the level that he did. It's an incredible album, bro. If you have this at your number one album, I understand. It's not at my number one album just because replay value of the top two is higher for me than KDOT's album. But as a piece of art, as a full album, it really doesn't get too much better than Mr. Morale and the Big Steppers. At the number two spot and again, another artist and album that you're like why the hell is this at number two he never brought this up all year at the number two spot we have saba with few good things i didn't do an album review to this i didn't mention this album whatsoever but this is most definitely one of my favorite albums of the year saba's pen is incredible the beat selection is incredible the features every feature on this album incredible saba is easily one of my favorite rappers that i've ever heard or ever listened to when i had first heard the album i was thinking the amount of features that were on there was going to keep it off for the top 10 but again just like k dot's album the more and more that i listened to it the more and more it struck me emotionally the maturity in saba's pen the storytelling the visceralness of the imagery that he's trying to get out to you, it's phenomenal, bro. Like it, it is, it is perfection. It could have been anybody and this was gonna be in my top 10. And what makes it so special is me saying it could have been anybody, but knowing that nobody could have done this but Saba. It's, it's a crazy album. If you haven't heard it yet, it's everywhere. Everything, everywhere, all at once type beat. And then finally, ladies and gentlemen, this should come as no surprise based off the fact you haven't heard the name yet. At the number one spot, the gold medal winner for album of the year, J.I.D. The Forever Story. J.I.D. to me is the strongest rapper in all, in all of rap. You might say that there's better conscious rappers. You might say that there's better technical rappers. Even if And if you said technical rappers, I'd be like, no, there is nobody that puts a package together of an album like Jid. There is nobody that raps as effortlessly as Jid does. There is nobody, there is nobody that's rapping as effortlessly with alliteration and internal rhymes and wordplay as Jid. Some people are going to say Eminem, and I understand why you would think that, but Eminem as of late does not have the substance under the technical rapping for me in the way that Jid does. It's an impressive feat, but Jid is doing it to the point where I'm like, I don't even know if he's trying to rap and, and rhyme this much. He might just think like this. At, at no point in this album did I think, oh, he tried to fit a rhyme scheme right there. At no point did I think, oh, he tried to fit alliteration right there. All doing all of that while basically opening his diary into his family and his come up into the game from the beginning to end. All of that rhyme, all that technicality and still being crystal clear with the message that he's trying to deliver it is insane bro this album is perfection front to back the payoff on the forever story from everything that we knew that jid could be the potential that he had the what what we knew he could blossom into from the seed that he was he done he's done exactly what i expected of him i expected him to come in and forcefully take the spot of best rapper in the game is he the best artist that's a little bit different because now we're talking about bringing k dot in we're talking about the the success of drake we're talking about j cole they're obviously much bigger artists and at the superstar level at, at they're at for a reason i'm not sure if jid will ever get to that level just because of the complexity but i wouldn't be surprised in the next couple of albums if we have jid up there in the mount rushmore of this generation with drake k dot 
and J. Cole. And to think that he might be on that list with the smaller audience strictly because of the effortlessness of his rhymes and his pen with the story and the concept that he's trying to convey to us, Jid can literally go as far as he wants. The Forever Story is my album of the year across all music genres. But that does it for this video and this year, ladies and gentlemen. I appreciate y'all's time. If you got this far, let me know what y'all's list looks like. Let me know what you agree with and don't agree with. If you haven't heard anybody on this on this list, consider going and checking them out because shit is hard. Like I said, join us over on Twitch. If y'all want to be part of this, we're going hard on Twitch 2023. Also consider joining Patreon. $5 a month gets you 85% of all content on Patreon. And we're talking about hundreds of reactions. So consider joining and supporting the channel over there. We will also probably be putting Patreon names at the end of every video starting next year. So if you want to show that you support and want to see your support in a video, consider doing that. But other than that, you're number three, you're number four in the books of reactions. Whatever it is, it's still going strong. And I will catch everybody in the new year. Happy New Year, everybody. Peace.